So I go out to a lot of bathrooms for customers and a lot of the time they'll say to me, what can we do with our bathroom that doesn't involve spending a massive amount of money but will completely refresh it and get it looking a lot better. This is a perfect example of that. This is a customer's bathroom I came out to. We, they've stripped out a lot of the stuff that was in it, but they basically said to me, we don't want to rip the bathroom out, but we want to sort of modernize it a little bit. So what we're going to be doing on this is, it's, it's what I sort of class as just like a bathroom refresh really. So what we're going to be doing on this is switching out the bath taps for new bath taps, new bath panel going on. This is coming out. The customer's taken out everything that was in here, got the floor up and began to take everything out. But the isolation valve on this one wouldn't shut off. So with this one, it's quite a big house and it's on a gravity system. So, so we've got to drain it all down to get this out, but we've also got to swap the shower mixer as well. So that's being swapped out. And then here they are having, I'll show you, a new vanity unit going in, which is here. So that's going to be the new base and big long Basin there, toilet there, concealed system going inside there. There's a new bath panel, and then they're going to get a new floor put in. So, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. I think the tricky bit is going to be draining down the system, to be honest. But we're going to do that, change everything out that we can, put new isolation valves on every point, and then switch the shower and then get it filled back up. So, to begin with, let's get the water off, get this basin out and get some new isolation valves on the hot and cold feeds. Right, welcome back to the channel. <coughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> Nearly choked to death then. Right, welcome back. <coughs> Gee, what the hell? Right. Welcome, let's try again. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is doing well. This video that you're going to see now is going to be in two parts. You've got part one tonight, if you're watching it live on Sunday, and part two tomorrow. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, get subscribed. You can watch this video and then watch the next video tomorrow night when I bring it out. Hit the like button, drop me a comment below, all that sort of stuff. Um, I really appreciate it and it just helps push the channel forward. So if you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Also, as a few of you may know, on the roof of my van, I had, being the operative word, I had a tent box, basically a tent on top of my van that I could go away in the van, fold the tent out, literally takes five minutes. Fold it out, sleeps two people, so I used to go away with my grandkids and my missus or whatever. It's just nice to jump in the van and have a couple of days away at the drop of a hat. So that has been on the roof of my van. However, it's no longer on there because I've got a big job coming up or a couple of big jobs coming up where I need... Um, some more storage and some more ways to transport stuff around ladders, uh, timber, ply. So I've had to get a big full length roof rack on the van. So shout out to Vanguard for sending that out to me and for sponsoring this video. So coming up next is me basically fitting this Vanguard roof rack onto the van. It's quite interesting actually and it is proper solid. So I'm quite looking forward to... I've never really had a roof rack on a van, to, to be to be honest. Just It's just changed the whole look of the van. And you know what I'm like with my van. So a little video coming up of me fitting the uh, roof rack, and then we'll get back to refreshing that bathroom. And don't forget, part two is coming tomorrow. So with my van, I've never had a roof rack on it. I've, I've always had vans that are long wheelbase vans like this, so that all my pipe and everything can go inside. Nine times out of 10, I can fit everything into the back of the van. But as you can see, it's starting to fill up in there quite a lot. And if you look on the roof, I've got my tent box. A few of you will have seen on maybe a couple of videos last year, I went away. Ba that, basically, that basically folds out into a two-man tent. Pull the cover off, pull the ladder out the side and it flips up over and it's a two-man tent that sticks up off the top. Of course, it's orange and black. However, I've got some jobs coming up soon and I'm going to need ladders and I'm going to need to carry quite a bit of stuff that's probably not going to fit in my van with the racking and stuff like that. So, I've been umming and ahhing about getting a roof rack for a while. I spoke to the people at Vanguard and they have sent me out the long wheelbase full uni rack plus for my van and a pipe tubes as well in here. So what I'm going to do is get this onto my van, but as you can see, to start with, we've got to get this off because I'm sure we've got to take these off as well because I'm sure the um, 
the Vanguard rack sits right into these four fixing points on the van. So before it rains, I'm gonna get that off, get the roof cleaned up. It's then ready for the Vanguard roof rack to be put on. And before I go, I must say big thanks as always to Dave King because he's let me have it delivered into Warwick Plum Base. I have so much stuff delivered into Plum Base, but to be fair, having that lot delivered to my house would be an absolute nightmare because no one's gonna be in, whereas Dave's always here. Well, you, oh, I'll say that, but he's just about to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got the brackets off the tent box. That's completely uh, loose now, as you can see it'll lift up. So what Dave's gonna do, without trying to wreck my van, is get the forks under it, just lift it off in one piece, then we can get the rails off. There we go, tent box, roof rack off the van. Looks dead strange like that, I haven't seen it like that, bare van for ages. Right, I think it's gonna rain, so what I'm gonna do is get the van cleaned, get the roof cleaned, and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and get that roof rack on. Right then, following day, as you can see, continuity error, different t-shirt, but we have got the Vanguard roof rack ready to go on the van. I assume this is gonna be the main pack and these are the rails. So let's get these unpacked, opened out, laid out, a bit like a shower screen, laid out, and we can see exactly what we've got to get this on top of there. So I've got it all laid out. That is obviously the end bars or the side bars that are gonna run the length of the van. These are the bits that are gonna sit on the middle, all the brackets here, Again, middle bits with the roller at the back and the brackets there. So what I'm going to do now is just go through the instructions. It also comes with an installation guide. So you can scan that, watch a video on YouTube, how to put it together. But just quickly, I'm going to go through that, make sure we've got everything, lay it all out, and then begin making up the bars and the rails. So I've started building this up now. And what it comes with, I think I've already said, is the scan code. I've got YouTube running here to show me how to make this roof rack up. And to be fair, it's really straightforward. They've done it really well. So I'm gonna crack on, and get the rest of it made up so it looks more like a roof rack ready to go on the van. Right, we're about an hour in. We've now got the brackets bolted on top of the van. We've got these rails set up ready. I've been following YouTube. There is a lot of stuff, but to be fair, if you follow their instructions on YouTube with that link, it is pretty self-explanatory. It's just about taking each little step one at a time and doing what you need to do. So we've got these rails made up now, we've got the brackets, I'm gonna get these now put on the top and then hopefully we can begin getting these sidebars on. Right, we're making some headway now. We've got the sidebars on. Um, I've got this side in, haven't bolted it in yet and I've got the other side there ready to be put on. And then once they're on, we just bolt them up on these little bits here and then that will be the side panels on. And then I think from looking at what we've got here, we've got three crossbars left to go on. So we'll make them up and get them on as well. And then what we can do with this is move it slightly forward, slightly back to get it perfect because we've got the rollers going on that far end. So I've now got these three separate bars. There was this one, this one, and this one. And it gives you the measurements from the instructions from the back of this point to the back of there. So that's 350. I think that's 350. And that one, because it's spanning right to the front, it's about 410, 415, I think. So now we're gonna tighten everything up and get this bolted all into position now. Because at the minute, all of the bolts are just sort of finger tight. So we'll go around now and get it completely bolted up. So now with the whole roof rack on, I'm just going around now, putting the little caps over the covers and it's also got these little plastic caps that go over there like so so we're going to go around get all of them on it's all been tightened up it's absolutely solid and then we've got the little upstands to go on here right that's the rack on now and it, as it shows in the instructions for the very last little bit you just got to put your hand on it and shake it so we'll put my hand on it and give it a good shake absolutely solid spot on right let's get these pipe racks on i've just unboxed as well these clamps now they just screw straight onto the bracket like that and then you can move it left or right We've got a pair down the end and a pair here left or right if you want to put some timber between it or tube or soil pipe or whatever and then just push it together twist the little yellow lug that's it solid bolt straight down so they're quite handy to have on there as well 
So there we go, all done. I reckon it's probably taken me three, maybe four hours to get this Vanguard Ulti Rack on, complete, done with everything on it. We've now got it in place, it's absolutely solid. I've bolted it all in. As I said, we've got the little brackets here in case you want to put some two before or anything like that up there. On this one, you've also got the roller bar. So if you're putting ladders on or big sheets of ply or big sheets of timber, that rolling bar works a treat. And we've got the pipe rack on there. It's the Vanguard, the line Vanguard one. So if I can get the key in it, I have tested it, there you go. Perfectly opens up just in front of that roller bar. Pop it in, lock it up, keeps all your copper. Lock it up, keeps your copper, your pipe work nice and safe in there. So yeah, proper solid roof rack on there. I'm really pleased with it. And to be fair, looking at the height of it, I think I'm still going to be able to get my tent box on the top of there anyway. So what I'm going to do is load up the pipe rack with pipe. I've got to go and pick my ladders up from a job I did last year, funny enough. So now I've got the roof rack on, I can go and pick them up without having to have them hanging out the back of the van. So massive shout out to Vanguard for A, sponsoring this video, B, sending this roof rack out. I'll stick a link in the description below to Vanguard. Go and check out their van racks. They also do van vaults and all sorts of storage stuff, racking, van vaults. So hit the link in the description and go and check them out. So 24 hours later and I completely forgot to tell you that Vanguard have given me a discount code for you. I'll put it in the link below, but if you use the code MJTIFF at checkout when you order something from Vanguard, you'll get 20% off. So big shout out to Vanguard for a little discount code on their roof racks, vaults, van vaults, racking, whatever you want, MJTIFF, which is 20% off. So we've got the hot draining down now. As soon as that's done, we'll get the bathtub swapped over get the new bar mixer fitted on there, and then, as I say, get the isolation valves on there. Then we can get the water back on and work from the isolation valves, and then the water's not on for the rest of the house for the rest of the day, and begin getting everything taken out and sort of measured in. And so we'll get that vanity unit put into place and then work out exactly where the toilet one's gonna go. But yeah, I think it'll look quite smart in here after that. We're leaving the radiator just because to drain this heating system down is quite a big house, so it'll just uh, be a bit of a pain. So they're happy leaving that. Uh, I think we're going to give it a lick of paint or even put a cover over it or something like that. Right, that's the water off now. Probably took about 10 minutes for it to completely drain out. We've got this bath here that was running. We've got a bath next door and we have the kitchen sink running. So what we're going to do first is switch out this existing bar shower. Now the customer's just bought all they want is just a new bar shower putting in so as the centers are 99 percent of the time the same 150 centers i have come across a shower years ago i think the centers were 160 never seen one since so there's a sort of rule of thumb they're always 150 so this is drained down we'll crack these nuts off get this one on we'll leave these cows on because they're siliconed in um and I don't want to sort of disturb it too much. So we'll just switch it out there, switch it out there and pop that shower on. So there's the old one, literally just those two nuts off the side, pop the new one on, tighten it up, connect the hose, and we're ready to go. So that's that done. What I'm going to do next is get this basin out. As I said, the isolation valve for the hot isn't working. Now we've got the hot drain down, I can cut it and put it where we need to go. So first of all, Let's get this basin out and get us some room. So we've got the basin disconnected now, waste off, pipes off. We can take this completely out of the way and see what's what. So with the shower switched out, the basin out of the way, I've now got, I haven't used this for ages, the Neurad Tapex kit. The, if you haven't got one of these, honestly, probably the best thing you'll buy if you do a lot of tap changes and just jobbing around sort of stuff. So we've got the fitting on there to get under there to get, I don't know if you can make it out, we've got two 22 mil swivels, old school swivels, no flexes on here, got the swivels, so we're going to undo them, whip these taps out and pop the new ones in. The new ones are dead similar to what's in, to be honest, but just a little bit more modern, a little bit more height on them, as you can see there. So, with the Tapex kit, that in there goes over your pipe, it just connects onto the bottom there and then just pop your ratchet on the end and whip it out. So let me put that there and see if I can get Oh, 
carefully. Oh, not much play in it. So, let's see if we can get this tap out and get a new one in. We'll get this one out of the way first, then we'll switch over and do the hot just to make life a little bit easier. But they're that tight that it's a case of putting the tap in, tightening it up, all in one, if you know what I mean. So that's that one. Let's reach over now, get the back one out. It's a bit of a fiddle, that back one. So that's the bath taps in now. I've just offered in the two units what we're going to have for the basin and the toilet. Now, with the saw pipe coming out there, we are going to have the toilet unit there. Now the basin unit is going to edge ever so slightly against there and then push right back. Now what we've got, because these are coming out the floor and we've got a trimmer here, a joist here, I don't want to too much disturb that there. So we're going to come through the bottom of the unit internally there and then all you'll have coming through there is the two pipes, the uh, waste pipe and we'll put some chrome caps on there just to finish it off within the unit. So let's get this out of the way and let's work out exactly how we're going to bring these pipes through the bottom and begin getting them bolted back to the wall. Right, I've got the basin unit in to position now. What we're going to do is get it bolted and screwed in to the back wall there. There's a little bit of movement on it, but they are having a floor put in um, at a later date. So it will take up that little bit of gap on the bottom of the unit. But at the end of the day, it's got to be level. So we've got the water back on now, just testing the shower. That's fine. We've got the isolation valves off there. And we've got hot and cold coming through. So that's all good. So what I've got to do now is bring the pipe work up through from the bottom of that unit up into here. Then we can put the basin unit on the top there. So we'll get the pipe poking up through here. We'll probably bring them to about here, get the top on and then work out. It's, I think the, it's going to be roughly around here and the bowl sits right in the middle of the unit. So the fittings are going to be about here so we can just come off and connect back onto there. So you've got the pipe work coming through the second shelf on this basin unit now. So we're going to begin building the basin unit up. I've got the waste here. Now, as always, this is massively going to divide people. I always silicon waste in. Um, I did use last week, funny enough, one of the Tide Basin Mate converters. Quite impressed with that. Just checked in the van. I haven't got another one in the van. So I'm going to have to put some in the van because that would have worked a treat on here. However, it doesn't. I personally don't like using the washers. They tend to always leak when I do it. So we put some silicon around this waste, get that made in, and then we can get the mixer tap made in and offer it into place here. And with the tails coming down there, we can see exactly how we're going to connect it up. So I just put a little bead around when it comes out. A little bead around there, like so. Pop it in. And then I'll just put another bead around there. Then I always just put a little bit around the nut and screw it into position. Right, we'll get that wiped off, get that tightened up, and then that's the waist done. So I've got the mixer tap here, I've got the flexes into the bottom of it. So the tap's going to sit about there, so we'll be able to connect onto the pipes, not a problem at all. So let's get this made into this basin and then lift it up into position and see how we're looking. So we've got the basin lifted into position now, taps made into it, waste made into it, pipe works ready to go and be connected on to the flexes here. What I've got to do is bed this down because it doesn't come with any brackets to hold it into position. So what I'll do is put a little bit of silicon around the outside edge there where it sits down onto. It's fairly heavy anyway. But then when we seal down the back of it, it's going to be fixed into place solid anyway. So that's not a problem there. So what I'm going to put on here, because we've got our two isolation valves at the bottom, is a couple of mail iron to coppers with the flat edge. Now, a lot of people mention when I connect flexes to isolation valves with the chamfered edge, loads of people go, don't do that, it's going to leak. I've never had, touch wood, I've never had one leak. And I think the reason being is when you tighten, a flexi onto an isolation valve don't hang on it with your grips or your adjustables just tighten it up nip it 
and then it's fine, it's not a problem. But I get what people say with these, because they're a complete flat end, they do sit onto the washers inside the flexes perfectly. So we've got two of those, two male lighter coppers, put one on there, one on there, slightly different heights just because of the way the flexes are. We'll get them connected, then we can get a trap on here, and I'm gonna come behind there, straight into the back of the trap there, and then we will trim some uh, talon pipe covers round to, to do that. So I'm gonna lift this off now, get that seated on, and then we can concentrate connecting the hot and colds up. So I'm just gonna lift this off there. Just get the silicone in. Just put a real thin bead along there. It's only going to sort of sit on it anyway. It's going to be fine. And back there. And then we could do it, lift it back in. it on that little bit and then as I say we can just run some silicon around the back there when we're finished but yeah that's on right let's get these connected so I've got a little bit of uh, paste on there we'll put the fitting on and get it connected up same with this one pop that on get the nut and ring onto it Get them tightened up and then these, let me just check which is which because sometimes I can cross over at the back. That's a hot, I'll tighten it on and then we'll get our cold connected on there. So let's get them tightened up and done. Sorry. that's that done I've got to pick a trap up tomorrow from Plum Base I've got a few little bits to pick up so there's no point in me shooting off now to get them pick a trap up pick a couple of little elbows up might even pick a street elbow up for there so it's going to go in the back of the trap but yeah we've got that done we'll get the doors back on I'm just going to spend 10 minutes getting the uh, where are we? getting the little handles put on get the doors on get the handles on there and then what I think we're going to do is get that unit in because we've got to pick flexi up for that and some other little bits for the concealed system. So, and then we'll shoot off in a bit, pick the bits up for tomorrow, get back, finish this, get the toilet in. And then with the bath panel, what I'm going to do, I personally don't like fitting bath panels. So I've had a word with the chippy. He's going to come out Friday and get that done. So that's the handles on the vanity unit now. It looks really nice actually in those little ones there. Just works. I think that style works with the taps and the taps down the end. Now I've got the toilet unit in position now. That's bolted in. Now what I want to show you, I think I mentioned this, near on every time I do a concealed system. Um, I think there's one company that overcome this with a packing block at the back and I think it's Roper Roads. But this isn't a Roper Road system. It is just one that come with that unit. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So you put the bracket on the top there and obviously the back of the system is completely flush. So the back of the system is just gonna hang down and you're gonna have the gap that is here, probably half an inch or so, there. So what's gonna happen is when that system is fixed into place, it's got that much flex in the back of it, look. You can see underneath, it flexes. Instead of sitting rigid and flush, it'll move. Now what will happen with that is, it can move the flush pipe and it can pop out the back of the toilet. And that's when sometimes you go to talk problems with toilets and the water's pissing out everywhere. It's because nine times out of 10, the system is just moving back. So what I do with that is, Get a little strip of timber across the back there, same width as that, just running across the back. Usually you can use something like an old cupboard door or something like that and it just takes up 
that gap and it stops that flex. What we're going to do is I've got them bits to pick up for the waste on the basin. I've got to pick a, a flexi fan connector up for that because I fit them and then because this system is back to here, it'll just flush your meter. Um, I'm going to pick a male line to copper up, uh, sorry, a female line to copper for this because I'll show you look how close that is. So what I'll be able to do with a male iron to copper, uh, a female iron to copper, is cut this thread down slightly and then make the fitting onto that, point it down and we can get onto that pipe coming up there. So you've got a few little bits to pick up for there, a little bit of timber as well. And then we're not too far from getting this finished off and getting it filled up. On the way home tonight, I'll swing into plumb base, grab them bits and we can get this finished off tomorrow. So before it rains, I'm gonna get that off, get the roof cleaned up and ready to put the full length Vanguard rack on top of the van. I'm getting it off. Dickhead. <laughs>